All right, well, um, we move on to the next module, and this one always uh, provides a, a fair amount of, of um, interest in students, partly because of how close to near and dear this topic is. Um, oftentimes what I see is students stay up all night and then they go to class to sleep. And if uh, the sound didn't wake you up when the video started, uh, this dear rooster uh, helps me out to demonstrate some of the various aspects of sleep and dreaming. Um, one of the first ones is, is uh, the, the idea that even when you're asleep, uh, your perceptual window is still cracked open. Uh, a good example would be if your phone rings at night and you hear it. Now you may put it on silent, you may even hear the buzzing of it at night and that's a good demonstration of the, um, the perceptual window being open. As a parent, uh, you're almost tuned in when you first have a, a little one uh, born to hear sounds of awakening and, and a lot of moms oftentimes r remark about that. So when we talk about sleep and dreams, one of the first big concepts is the idea of a circadian rhythm. And the circadian rhythm is uh, basically put together uh, as uh, a 24-hour cycle um, that uh, of wakefulness and sleepiness. And that's uh, what we refer to as a circadian rhythm. And it's roughly, uh, uh, morning approaches, uh, the body temperature rises, then it uh, peaks during the day, dips for a time in the early afternoon, which is uh, a lot of times where siestas and nap times occur. And then it, it uh, rises again, sometimes in the evening, and then drops off precipitously at uh, the end of the day. We can adjust our circadian rhythm um, with ongoing uh, exposure to light. Uh, it has a direct impact and actually in some respects some people would say that uh, Thomas Edison probably had the most dramatic effects on human production partly because of, of just the, the invention of the light bulb. So sleep and dreams, 24-hour cycle, uh, when we get into that cycle, a, a lot of times we can adjust it. Uh, for a lot of students, uh, they adjust the cycle downward uh, depending on classes. Some of, some, some of you might have classes at 8 o'clock in the morning, and, uh, but they can uh, dr move that cycle later in the day uh, just by um, sleeping patterns. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that uh, you can stay awake. Uh, I've had way too many classes where students are distinctly uh, dropping off to sleep even in a morning class, partly because they are making sleep something which uh, you will hear me talk about as something that's negotiable. It's a little bit like um, whether you eat or not. Uh, and I would suggest to you that uh, this is one of these areas that you really need to make more non-negotiable if you really want to um, uh, consolidate the stuff that you're learning during the day. Uh, about the age of 20, slightly, slightly earlier, we begin to shift from being night owls to uh, being morning people. Uh, and you hear people talk a lot about uh, whether they're morning or evening people. Generally, um, the older you get, oftentimes the mornings uh, end up being far more productive for you than later in the day. Uh, interestingly enough, for me as a professor, uh, because so many of my students stay up late at night, uh, and I work um, most of the day, not only teaching, but also developing material and, and other things that I do to try to make your experience as uh, full as possible. I'm up late as well, and my hours uh, oftentimes reflect students' hours um, during the school year. I get back to a normal cycle in summer, just in time for it all to collapse when school starts again. So, uh, circadian rhythm, key point, key concept. 
Let's move on now just to look at the sleep cycles themselves. So when sleep finally overtakes us, and this is one of these things that uh, you might have heard uh, that uh, uh, the phrase that sleep is the irresistible tempter that, uh, to whom we inevitably succumb. Uh, and we move through sleep cycles, and that's what I want to highlight in this particular uh, segment is the sleep cycles we move through. Now, one of the things that, uh, and this, is, uh, this little diagram is in your book, but it gives you a little bit of an idea of how the person is actually hooked up in, um, in an EEG as they are uh, going through. So we have an EMG, which looks at muscle tension, and the eye and movements and so forth, and, and you see the side view. But we also have an EEG, which is uh, actually moving and looking at the brain waves as they, um, uh, as they accumulate over time that indicate the actual sleep cycle themselves. So the first one essentially is we have, uh, we have four, and uh, usually yawning is the, the, the first indication that uh, the melatonin is climbing, and um, it is uh, uh, it increases your heart rate, um, and it increases your alertness, and it also increases oxygen to your bloodstream. Hence, the alertness increase in alertness. Um, so, essentially, we move from um, uh, wakefulness to the first level uh, when you um, are in your bed, and these are referred to as alpha waves, and that's really the first, um, um, first stage. You're resting, you're relaxed, um, uh, you are growing uh, more and more uh, uh, tired as you lay in your bed itself. Uh, of course, there are some things that can interfere with this, uh, but before too long, we fall into uh, what is referred to as NREM, non-REM, uh, sleep stage one. And uh, it's often referred to as NREM. Uh, and during this brief period in time, uh, you might have something called uh, hypnagogic hallucinations. Uh, it's, it, uh, this is uh, hypnagogic, and this is often the time when you actually will see shadows and see things and so forth, and it, it's the point in time where the brain is still quite active, um, but it is slowing down in speed and opening up for uh, uh, the experience, finally, of w falling into the next actual stage itself. So the waking alpha, uh, and then we go into NREM1, um, and the, uh, the, these hallucinations begin to show up. Sometimes you have the sensation of falling, um, and uh, you might jerk awake, uh, and that tells you that uh, what stage you are actually in. Um, interestingly enough, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is the movie uh, Inception, which talks a lot about dreaming. Um, and then the second uh, level, or the second stage, if you will, or third, we're going from wakefulness to NREM1 to then NREM2. NREM2, and this is characterized by uh, spindles. And um, l let, me, let me bring up here the um, actual uh, brain activity so I can point these out to you. Hang on a second, we'll move to the, the next illustration so I can point each one out to you specifically.